of angry groups of people who have suffered from abuse themselves, and that, that really burns me the most. On Triple J. OK, it's time to talk Sticky Fingers. Have you heard of them? They have a huge following. Up until last year, they'd had songs voted into every single Hottest 100 since 2011. So what happened last year? Well, they were on hiatus, citing internal issues in the band and an apology for drunken behaviour by the lead singer, Dylan Frost. He also revealed at the time that he was struggling with bipolar schizophrenia. There were two notable controversies in the months leading up to that announcement about a year off. Uh, First, Dylan Frost was accused of racially taunting an Indigenous band. Uh, The video released by that band did not prove that to be true. And then just days before they announced the hiatus, there was another incident uh, at a Sydney pub where Dylan was accused at the time of intimidating a female member of the music industry. That person's account of the incident has since been removed from Facebook and so have several media reports quoting it. Now, here we are, over a year later, and they've announced that they are back. They played their first show almost two weeks ago at the Bad Friday Festival at Easter. And on Friday Just Gone, the lead singer Dylan Frost addressed the concerns about his behaviour in an audio statement. Here's part of what he said. First of all, I need to start by making it clear that racism and violence towards women are never okay. I admit that I have gotten into verbal fights and at times fights with other lads over the years. These past indiscretions have probably led people to believe that the allegations against me are true. I also have to acknowledge that my alcoholic behaviour in the past has intimidated or made people feel unsafe around me, and I am truly sorry for this. It really upsets me to know that, through a series of misinterpreted accounts of events, I've now been seen as a symbol of something I detest, a racist woman basher. I can be an arsehole sometimes, but I'm not that much of an arsehole. But I have to explain except the, um, the fact that I've angered groups of people who have suffered from abuse themselves, and that, that really burns me the most. So that's last week's statement from Dylan Frost, the lead singer of Sticky Fingers, a band whose behaviour led them to tank some time out. Uh, today they came into the Hack Studio for an interview to address all the allegations and the rumours in more detail. Now, all five members came in to talk it through earlier this afternoon, so that's Seamus Coyle, the guitarist, uh, Beaker Best, the drummer, Paddy Cornell, the bass player, Freddie Krabs, the keyboard player, and the lead singer, Dylan Frost. Now, it might be hard for you to tell uh, their voices apart during this interview, but it's Paddy and Freddie doing most of the talking, uh, with Dylan doing some of the talking, and there is some swearing in this interview. All right, here it is, Sticky Fingers. Welcome to the Hack Studio. It's good to be here. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. Okay, so first question, why do you want to do this interview? Why do you think we might want to do it? I assume you want to uh, address the the rumours and innuendo about the band. Yeah, I guess that's one point we want to sort of discuss, uh, among a bunch of other things. I yeah. guess we've been away for a year, and uh, I guess there's a lot to talk about. A lot has happened. There are things to address, there's stories to tell, and there's plans for the future. Yeah. I guess the reason we wanted to do the interview is summed up in this message we got from a young female listener. She wrote to us and said... We would love to see an interview or article with Sticky Fingers, love their music, but don't want to support a band whose members are reportedly racist and sexist. What do you say to that listener? A hundred percent, and I couldn't agree more, and we're actually on point with that. We're exactly the same. We don't condone uh, violence towards women, racism, or any of the uh, um, you know hearsay that's been going around on the internet about the band. Um, but we've found that... As you might have noticed, we've been silent for nearly a year mm. uh, on all fronts, but it's become apparent to us more than that blatantly obvious that our silence has become deafening and that's why it's sort of time for us to speak out now. Yeah, well, the perceptions around racism came from an event uh, in 2016. There were rumours or allegations of Dylan being racist at a, at a gig in Marrickville in July 2016 and the band was called Dispossessed and they're mostly Indigenous, and during their set, one of their friends was giving a speech about the impact of colonialism. It turned into a bit of a shouting match between him and the audience. Here's some of the audio from that night. No, yeah, ladies, ladies, shut the fuck up there. I have the biggest respect. No, 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 what are you fucking doing? Oh, no, You're no, having no, a fucking go. Now, the next day, the lead singer made a statement that the gig dissolved into a circus of hyper-defensive white supremacy and self-entitled colonial privilege and that the band walked off the stage when the lead singer of Sticky Fingers, among others, began grossly shirt-fronting us, yelling that we are not the ones listening. What do you guys have to say about that whole incident? 
Well, for those who know Dispossessed, know that the band is sort of known for deliberately um, antagonising their audiences in order to sort of um, bring attention towards what they stand for. And if you look at the footage from that night, it kind of tells a bit of a different story to what they're saying about Dylan. Yeah, when the video emerged, uh, there was no smoking gun of, of Dylan being racist. It did look like you were actually trying to calm things down in the video. I don't know what was said before the moments that that footage um, showed. Dylan, what was your perspective on the whole thing? Um, I guess, so. yeah, I've gotten myself in the situations um, under the influence that where uh, people have kind of um, th- thought these things of me. But, um, yeah, I'm not ro- uh, racist, you know. I'm wholeheartedly against it, um, referring back to my referring back to my statement uh, last week. Um, yeah, it's against my nature. And, um, yeah, I guess I guess everything just kind of got a little bit... Um, it just got a bit... Uh... It's been interesting, to say the least. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. Dylan, I can, I can hear that it's not an easy thing to talk about because there's so much riding on all of this. Um, was there anything before that footage where, where you could be construed as being racist towards Dispossessed that night? Um, I guess my alcoholic behaviour in the past has um, made people believe that I've done far worse things that I have actually done. But um, uh, I guess um, I don't want to. I don't want to continue this behaviour. And being sober as a band has really made me um, think of the bigger picture. Yeah. So you're talking there about like general behaviour, but yeah. you're not saying you have anything to apologise for that particular night. Well, I guess I am sorry uh, for making people feel that way, you know. Right, in general or on that night? Oh, uh, yeah, on that night. That's Dylan Frost, the lead singer of Sticky Fingers, and we're doing an in-depth interview um, addressing concerns about the band. Um, Harry from Lilyfield says, personally couldn't, do, couldn't care less about what the Sticky lads do on their own time. I'm into their music, that's all I'm in it for. Uh, someone else says, oh, the classic I have a drinking problem card what a crumpet. All right, let's get back into this discussion about their behaviour. Uh, Sticky Fingers, the other key incident that created a very negative perception about Dylan and, and therefore the band by association happened four months after that dispossessed story hit the media. So we're talking about December 2016. It was at a Sydney pub and there was a verbal altercation between you, Dylan, and two other members of the music industry. And, and one of those people went public about it. They've since taken down their post about the incident. What do you want to say about the incident? Yeah, I guess I've made other people feel intimidated by me, uh, mm. with me witness me in the state. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it sounds like you, you're you going back to the statement that you made that last week and, and saying a similar thing here. Um, when you talk about um, making people feel intimidated, which is what you said in your statement, are you talking about that particular night that yeah. you, you made? Right, Okay. And so how do you feel about the, the way that whole incident made you guys look as a band? It was, it was tough. It was definitely tough. This was also, you know, it was a while ago. We've had time to reflect on this. A year is a long time. There's been some private things that the boys have done, rehabilitation. I don't know how much they want to go into it, but we've been seeking help and we've actually spoken to a lot of strong voices in the community where, you know, we're gaining more insight into how our actions have affected other people. And, you know, the, I think the sobriety is a big thing. That's really important to mention that, you know, we were legless a lot of the time, you know, and that regardless of who you are, if you're constantly doing that to yourself, you're going to get yourself into bother. You're going to get yourself into situations that you don't want to be in where as a band we are sober and we're really committed to doing that. I understand that. I guess there were these two big incidences that really caused you guys a lot of damage in the public eye, right? But they, I guess, came about in the context of, of other behaviour which you guys addressed in the statement, which you're not proud of. Yeah. Well, I mean, we were, we were fighting each other. We were physically fighting each other. We were all, we were all pissed fighting each other. This, is, this has kind of been a very sort of single attack on Diz. But, you know, we have all been in that situation where 
we're fundamentally ruining what the most important thing about us is, not just because of these allegations, but because of a lot of b- other behaviour before that was ruining the core sides to us, right? And, and, and the timing, well. I think, to the listeners, if I can say, the timing has made it out that we have well, been yeah. on hiatus to this allegation and, and there's no there's no lie. Well, just that- for people that don't know what happened there, um, the announcement of your hiatus came just days after um, this incident at a Sydney pub. So, yeah, yeah. so it's understandable why that perception was created. It's also just, so was it, was it related it to that came, event? It also just came a number of days after we just finished a tour and we, we literally just scraped through it. But, but, but I guess what people want to know is like, what specifically are you sorry for? I guess 10 years of being in a drunken, debaucherous rock and roll band, we've pissed off a few people along the way and we haven't really played by the rules at any point. Of, of our kind of ride. What have you done to piss people off? Be specific. Uh, I guess we've just been drunk and debaucherous and we've kind of, we haven't really thought about it, but five dudes sort of rolling around the joint, half pissed, taking the piss, it's probably scared a few people, but we haven't openly ever gone to sort of target people. We're not, we haven't bullied people intentionally, groups nor individuals. Hasn't been of that nature. It's always been like tongue in cheek. You know, things that you're, you're not apo- given enough. You're apologising for something and in the statement, Dylan, you said um, you had fought lads over the years, so there's been... Some violence. The, the, how, how much? How much violence has there been? Um, uh, you don't want to. You don't want to address that. There's, well, there, there have there have been fights with you know over the years. There's things like I mentioned before. There's been fights that we've had, you know, with each other, and we haven't been counting on fingers that kind of stuff. Dylan, a lot of the um, accusations have been against you as an individual, but. You're the one who's not really talking in this interview. Can can you explain to me why that is? I guess it's about that good in interviews, you know. And in, in the past, uh, you know, my uh, my you know violence in my past under the influence. I guess you know, fucking boys will be boys, you know. And uh, that's that's not what I'm that's not what I'm here to promote. I promote you know peace and love. You know what I mean? What did you mean when you just said boys will be boys? Shit happens, man. But aren't you here saying you're you're sorry for what's happened? Yeah, I am. I am sorry. Yeah. Shit happens sounds like you don't really care. Oh, I do care, mate. I do. I really do. I just find it hard to talk about this stuff, you know? Like actually hard to communicate? Like you feel nervous or... Yeah, I think so. Like it's... It's not like... It's not easy doing this. And I don't, I don't mean to like, you know, just... No, that's have that's fairly fair have this is back here, but there's also you know conditions that he's got too, which you know it's well, let, it's let, very hard. Sorry, it's very hard to go in and just probe in and say you know this because you know there's a lot that we don't understand too about you know generally about mental health and an ability to respond in situations where it's really quite tough. I can understand and respect that, and and let's let's go to that point about mental health because that came up in Dylan's statement in December. 2016 when you took the hiatus um Dylan you publicly revealed that you'd been diagnosed with bipolar schizophrenia and that you'd struggled to deal with that how hard has that struggle been I'd rather not talk about it mate you know that's more personal stuff that I've had to deal with over the <clears throat> yeah few years so okay yeah all right so once you did go into hi- hiatus what happened a lot of time to think that's for sure yeah yeah people were, were with Played in separate things, I guess, you know. We'll... In rehab. There was some rehab involved? Yeah, there was. Yeah. <clears throat> Spent uh, about three months in a rehabilitation clinic. And, uh, yeah, that was, was pretty interesting. Was that really helpful? Yeah. Definitely changed my outlook on life. And it really did help. Helped me a lot. And, Paddy, what about you? Yeah, look, there's nothing I really want to get into massively because I, I don't think I am or any of the guys interested in selling a sub story. But yeah, I spent like three, three and a half weeks in a psych ward and voluntary and it was shit house. But that was kind of the state of mind that I'd gotten myself into from just the way I was treating myself and the way we were all treating ourselves and the way that we were kind of treating each other. That's why things just kind of, um, kind of came to a halt. And yeah, it was sucked. Last year was the worst year of my life, I won't lie. And so when did you guys get back together and start talking about making music again because when you went on hiatus, it was indefinite. Well, well yeah, we, we, we've, we've seen people say things like, oh, there wasn't even a hiatus. They took a whole year up just to write an album, but it doesn't take us a whole year to write an album. We only really started getting busy about, what, two, three months ago, something like yeah, this? Yeah, And it sort of happened really organically. Like, 
there, there was a period where we, we all just kind of all just went off and did our own thing a bit, which was perfectly healthy after 10 years of being in a band, like spending every day uh, in a van together and every night on a stage together. It felt pretty organic to sort of go off and do our own thing and then just as organic as it was sort of coming back healthier and stronger. And yeah. All right, guys. Um, I've asked a lot of questions. I really appreciate you all fronting up here to to address these issues and and addressing you, your fans and the people with concerns. Thanks for coming in. Cheers. Thanks. Hack. Triple J. That was the band Sticky Fingers, all five members answering questions about their behaviour. Hack. Of angry groups of people who have suffered from abuse themselves and that, that really burns me the most. On Triple J. A lot of text coming in about that interview. Mel from Albury. Seriously, can't they just agree that the behaviour is repulsive? Making excuses related to alcohol consumption isn't okay. Someone else says it's like the band is trying to push him to apologise but he isn't quite there yet. Another person says nobody's perfect. This doesn't excuse negative behaviour but hey, they're trying to make up for it and can't deny they make great music that connects with a lot of people. Another person says I feel bad for Dylan. He had a bad time and he's trying to fix his past and everyone is making it very hard. They're a great band and I want to have new music. I don't want them to go into hiding again, says that listener. Another listener says, remorseful, doesn't sound like it. And Leah, you say, I love Sticky Fingers and appreciate them barring everything or bearing everything for the nation to hear. Thanks, guys. And you need to keep it strong and together. 